Who's ready to have fun in worship? Hey, hey. Woo! Yes! We love you, Jesus! You are good, you are faithful, you are true. That's why we come here tonight.
This is a house of worship This is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name This is a house of Our hearts are full of faith You have our full attention You have the final say Come alive in the name of Jesus Come alive in the name of Jesus This is a house we bring everything to the feet of Jesus Everything in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles There's rest Resurrection power and Your blood runs through our veins Your kingdom triumphs over Even the coldest grave yeah. So come alive in the name Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. 
so faithful. I love Acts chapter 10 verse 38. 
Peter is commenting about what Jesus did in his earthly ministry. He said, you know about Jesus of Nazareth, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. That verse clears so much up. Sickness is oppression from the devil. And Jesus, being that he came to destroy the work of the devil and seek and save that which is lost, was healing in his earthly ministry. And guess what? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever your need is tonight, whatever issue you're facing, or what I sense in my spirit, you know people that have been demonically oppressed. You know people that were walking with God and now they're not. And uh, we could just lift them up right now. How many of you know people that need a breakthrough? So we stand in the gap. We stand in faith tonight on a Friday night church service where we could come in and we can enter in and worship. You guys online, you could watch and you can worship with us. But in case you're dealing with oppression, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus and command it to leave your life right now. Demons have to flee in the name of Jesus. And whatever kind of sickness, whatever kind of diagnosis you've had, cancer cells are not as big as our God. Heart issues are not as big as our God. And I pray your liver, your kidneys, all your organs, whatever it is that you're dealing with that needs a touch from the Holy Spirit, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead actually dwells in you. The Bible says he'll quicken or give life to your mortal body. How about that? So, Lord, tonight we receive, we believe we receive when we pray. We pray tonight that our loved ones that are out there that have kind of gone goofy, that, God, you will send laborers to cross their path. God, you'll send laser beams of revelation to them and that they have an epiphany. They have a revelation of who Jesus is. They get set free from the grip of the clutches of the enemy, alcohol, drugs, whatever it may be. We pray the touch of the Holy Spirit through our region, the bi-state area, St. Louis area, in Jesus' name, the heartland. We come against the devil from shore to shore, from the tip of Florida all the way up to the top of Maine, all the way over to Seattle, all the way down to San Diego, to the tip of Texas, all the way up to the top of North Dakota. We bind the enemy over the United States of America. We pray, God, you would move mightily upon our country. God, we pray you will move mightily upon our generation. God, we pray you will move mightily throughout the nations, Lord, all around Europe and Asia and the Latin world and the islands, Scandinavia, every continent, every people group. We push back the lies of the devil and we stand in faith. Not only is this a house of miracles, we serve a God of the miraculous. We embrace the Bible, the gospel of the miraculous, supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. We stand in faith tonight, believing, trusting, and walking in with you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles.
Come on, man. 30 seconds of praise. Let's give him praise. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that we are names are written in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for our loved ones that are on the other side. Thank you, Jesus, for souls coming into the kingdom. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's so good. The Lord is so good. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Wow, you're going to be so glad you came to church tonight. You're going to be so glad. You're going to find your friends and you're going to say, hey, man, you should have been at church on Friday night. I want you to turn around and look at somebody next to you and say, you're one of the smartest people in the history of the world. Go on, man. Go ahead and tell them. I love you all. God bless you. God bless you. Hi, Fred and Jeannie. God bless you back there. Love you guys. Hey, John and Abby. Good to see you over there. Hey, hey, middle schoolers and high schoolers. God bless you guys. How are you? Good to see you. Right on. I bless you, Dave. All right. Yes. Welcome to St. Louis Family Church Friday night service. I see my, my daughter Chelsea back there. Hi, Chelsea. Good to see you. Love you guys. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad to be in church tonight. This is good. Man. You guys uh, watching live stream, I just pray you really, something just occurs to you, that you get, you get something that you need. The Lord really blesses you. You know, uh, Taylor bought me a pocket knife, a new pocket knife. And um, it came in handy. My, I, my wife and I went on a, a date uh, in, at the uh, Art Hill. And uh, we went up there, sat up and, and just kind of on at Forest Park. Just, it was a beautiful day, a little overcast. It had been raining, so it ran off all of the, the, the babies. So it, we just got to be out there and have it to ourselves pretty much. But when he, we got out of the car, we walked around, and there was a rustling in the bushes. And... There was a, a robin, a uh, red breast, that had been wrapped up in, I think it was a female, and it was trying to get uh, material for the nest and found some kite string. Well, it wasn't just any ordinary cotton kite string. It was nylon kite string, and this bird was just wrapped up in it, in between her claws and, you know, all around her neck and everything, and it was bad. And uh, so I picked the bird up, and... Um, you, got, you know, I tried to untie it. I didn't want to get my pocket knife near it because it was, tr you know, trying to kill me, you know, <laughs> with its beak, you know, while I'm trying to help it. And um, biting me and pecking me. And uh, like what happens when you try to reach in to help sometimes with situations, you sometimes draw back a bloody stump. But anyway, that happened to Jesus, didn't it? But um, I finally got my knife out and, and um, just you know, aim the blade away from the bird, cut the, cut the strings, and then began to unravel it. And sure enough, you know, it's just, and my wife can attest to it. She, she videoed it. And um, so I got all the strings off the bird, turned around and, and, and let the bird go. And, and she took off and she, you know, she was, she was relieved, you know. And I thought about the parallel that the word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Now, this is a, this is a finely honed pocket knife. You know, it's really sharp, and, you know, uh, it's, it was a good, good thing I had it because it aided in the bird's deliverance. So I want to tell you, the Word of God is our, it's a sword. It's a two-edged sword, and it's sharp, and it, it will help us cut through the crazy stuff that we deal with in life. And I think this bird was just minding her own business and thought she found some good material to you know, make a nice nest, and uh, it got the better of her. But God had uh, set it up for us. We were going to go into the art museum. And she, you know, we decided we don't we don't need to do that. We'll just sit outside. And uh, so I still have a huge endorphin rush over rescuing the bird. I just feel like a superhero. No, no, hold your applause. I don't want to lose my reward. But, but it, it's rewarding to know I helped him out. And I think that we can pray the prayer of faith for people, speak the word, right? And we can see people get breakthrough from 
whatever's binding you. And I'm believing God for that. And so, uh, yeah. Um, let's get ready to honor the Lord with our giving. Last week, my wife turned to me and she said she wanted to double up. And I thought, man, I'm glad I'm married to somebody that's generous. God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, so we uh, trust the Lord with, with as we give. You know, we, we take our, our giving seriously through the, you know, I believe God will take care of your gasoline, your food, your gra- your your grad your paying for your kids' school, uh, or maybe I guess somebody else will. I don't know what the deal what their deal is right now. We paid all our stuff, but whatever. Maybe we'll cash in and ask them to retro pay what we all paid. You know, but wow. We had when we went to Bible school, we had double tuition. Paul Chase is here, my friend from uh, years ago, and he's. Uh, trying to get back to the Philippines. He just told me that Manila has been closed for the last over almost two years, year and a half. They just start now started to allow physical uh, meetings, church services. So um, we, we are blessed we got to do that earlier. And so make sure you tell people, let's, let's get people in the house. Amen. But right now, let's get ready to pour it on. Um, tithes, offerings, alms. Uh, we had a little earthquake today. Is that right, Kingston? What were you doing when you felt it? You were at home. Did you feel it? You were driving. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't. Yeah, Addison felt it. And you, and it was, uh, where, what was the, where was the epicenter? It was 141 and 44. And it was a 2.5, so that's that's not that bad. But, uh, yeah, with with the... When I moved here from California, I got away from the San Andreas fault line. I thought, this is great. I could at least be away from that, not knowing that we have the new Madras fault line that's even worse. But we have a firm foundation, and his name is Jesus. He's our solid rock, right? And we don't live in fear because, in fact, God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So uh, we're going to... Uh, be led by the Holy Spirit on all the things God has for us up ahead. And as you're giving, we're preparing. And, uh, you know, when I, Paul invited me to go to the Philippines for many decades, and I finally made my way there, right coinciding with that cyclone. What was that cyclone called? Yeah, it, it was a terrible deal. And their church just jumped, brought huge bags of rice. Their son, Ryan, had these, um, I'm st- I still covet those, um, those, those propane-powered walks, the gigantic walks. I love that. I, I, you know, I just think we could cook, we could cook jambalaya, right, for, for, for just multitudes. And I think we should get some practice so we could be ready. Amen? Wow. It's hard to amen that stuff because, you know, you, it just means we have to get ready to serve and help and care for people. But are you guys ready to give? You guys give young people, start sowing for the future. Start giving uh, consistently tithes, offerings, alms, and uh, develop it into your core as a young person. So as you hit your your breakthrough, you keep carrying that mentality and you keep being a sower. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus, that you meet all of my needs, living bread, living water. You meet every, every need of mine. And I, as I give, I pray you would be honored because that is my intent. As I sow, as I give, I pray your kingdom advances I pray lives get turned around, churches stabilized, its vision and mission are fulfilled, and I contribute toward that. I have a part in that. I love to participate because God loves a cheerful giver. Therefore, he loves me. In Jesus' name, amen. You could text to give right now if you'd like. You can text to give all night over and over again. Just keep pushing the button as much as you want. Amen. So 
by drawing near to God, and the Bible says he'll draw near to you. You may be seated. I want to introduce our guest. Pastor Paul Chase has been here many, many times over the years. Um, I'm a relational person, and I really only bring in guest speakers that I have a relationship with and that I know. And uh, I've known Paul since the 1970s. He and his wife, Shadi, um, were like us. They were newlyweds when we, we started at Bible school in, in the same time. They came from the, from the Florida area. We came from the heartland, and there we, we met together in that preparation phase. And uh, then Paul took his uh, beginnings of his family, moved over to the Philippines, and he's been laboring in Southeast Asia and making a huge impact in, in that part of the world. And um, you know, so it's a privilege really to have folks like this come our way, and I, I'm excited. Um, I got a text from another minister, and I told him that I had uh, Paul here. We, we, know, uh, we all know each other, and he said to say hi to him. And um, I told him, I, I get to sit in my, my church and take notes and listen. And uh, I'm really excited about that. I got my book out and my pens ready. And uh, so I, I want you to give a big, huge welcome to Pastor Paul Chase as he comes to minister St. Louis Family Church. 
Land of the free, home of the brave. Love you, man. Well, how is everybody? It's so good to be here. Coming here takes, on my part, great, or or coming up here takes great, great discipline. And listening to the Holy Ghost. Because from the beginning of coming out here, hearing the worship, and, and then when Jeff comes up and begins to exhort and share things, I have about six ways I would just love to go. And I, I know I can't. Uh, we did lock the doors. You can't get out. Don't try. <laughs> and, uh, but there's just, you, you know you're in a good place in, in relationship. When you come into a place and your heart is so full and you just feel you could just pour and go this way and that way. But I promise you I'm not going to ramble and blabber and just, you know, kind of go in circles. But uh, there's just a few things I have to hit when I love the fact that you are the hero of the bird community now. <laughs> and Because we, where we live in Florida, we have this tree and Shadi has these bird feeders out there. I never realized how stinking ridiculously expensive bird seed is. I mean, I go to the hardware store and she goes, honey, quit buying those little bags, buy the big ones. I went, sweetheart, the little ones are 40 bucks. These birds have been living without you for years. And now all of a sudden I'm creating a new economic bill on a monthly basis to feed those that God has been feeding from the beginning. She goes, yes, but when I feed them, they come and they're perched and I get to watch them. And after a while, you just shut up and go buy bird feed. How did they live without shoddy? I have no idea. And, uh, but when you were talking about your knife, and, 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 and I usually carry a knife, but airlines don't like that when you do that now. And, uh, but, you know, the Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Aren't you glad Jeff didn't take a sword to that bird? <laughs> yeah, the bird's glad. See, the sword works, the, the word of God works outwardly as a sword, but when it comes to the delicate areas of touching other people or your own heart, then it becomes a scalpel. It cuts outwardly, but it also cuts inwardly. It's not just something that you use out this way. It's something that God uses inwardly this way. And it's with it's delicacy and, pre, and precision. And, and the word is always wanting to work delicately and with precision. And when you go to your brother, it's with a scalpel not a sword. Use the sword on the devil. But there is a a delicateness and a kindness and a consideration and a precision and a humility when you go to use the word on behalf of someone else. You know, doctors use precision and intricacy to bring healing and help when they cut. Just make sure your cuts have that kind of motive behind them. It brings liberty and healing and help and uh, amen. And, and then the other thing he was sharing about Ryan, I just, uh, you know, I haven't been with you guys for a while, but we have a, a kitchen truck now. And uh, yeah, no, I got to show you pictures of this thing. And uh, which led me to another message. Like I said, there's about six of them. It's kind of like this way, I can go this way, I can go this way. And uh you know, what can God do with a yes? Oh, but I'm not going to preach that. Oh, but it's amazing. It's amazing what can God do with a yes. If you'll just say, see, only, he's not asking you to do it. He's just asking you to get in agreement. Because what he has on the other side of your yes is everything he's already made provision for and everything he's always intended to do. He just needs you to do what? Be willing and say, yes. 
Yes. And if you'll say yes, you make yourself available. And then any provision or ability, it all comes from him. All you need is a yes. And when we said yes, I had a Korean guy come to our church, spoke no English. And uh, this is after uh, Jeff was in there. And uh, I think Jeff had already left. And actually, he saved my life. Pastor Jeff probably saved my life. Because I was in that city, Takloban. One of our pastors had died in that island there. And so I flew down to do a funeral. We had all of our pastors together from two different islands. And so I was meeting with him. Shadi called me up. She goes, honey, you're down there with all your pastors. Just spend the weekend. Just stay. Stay there. Spend with them. You know, we got it covered. And everything's good. And, and I said, you know, that's really a great idea. And then, and then the pastor of our church in that city said, you know, Pastor Paul says, we, we're expecting a storm to come in, you know, in the next day or so. And if it comes in, and we, you know, they say it's going to be, you know, kind of bad. We're not really sure. But sometimes if the, if, if the clouds are real, real low and it rains a lot, the flights don't come in. And they may cancel a flight for a day or, or two. Well, Pastor Jeff was coming, was going to be flying in in like a day and a half. And I thought, I've only been waiting 150 years for him to come to the Philippines. So I need to make sure I'm there, you know. And so if they delay the flight, you know, after you've waited, you know, a century for your friend to visit, you know, you want to make sure you're there to greet him when he comes in. So I said, well, guys, as much as I'd love to stay, you know, uh, and I had just a beautiful, uh, the hotel room was right by the bay looking out over the ocean, and I'm thinking, gosh, this is so nice. No, Jeff. I'm going to go meet Jeff. So I flew out the next morning. The evening of the day I flew out, the typhoon came in. It has, to this day, some of the strongest recorded uh, wind uh, of any storm since they've recorded storms. 200 miles an hour plus sustained winds. A 40-foot typhoon wave came in the bay. My hotel, where my room was, the water was 20 feet deep inside the hotel. And my room would have been underwater, and my room was facing the ocean. The wave came right into my hotel, right into my room where I would have been sleeping that night. And when the typhoon hit and the tsunami hit, it was at night. 65,000 plus people died. The waves were so strong, and because the Philippines is at sea level, all cemeteries are ground level. And so later on when we were doing uh, outreach there, we would drive through towns and barrios, and graves were just busted open, and bones were everywhere. So this is how strong it was. This is where MacArthur reinvaded when he came back into the Philippines. He invaded the Philippines. And I've seen pictures of when the Air Force and the Navy bombed this area where the invasion took place. They didn't do a fraction of the damage that this typhoon did. So my wife almost got me killed, but Jeff saved my life. <laughs> Thank God for friends coming in, you know. So he was there, and let me tell you, the help that he was and what you guys have done in the nations of the world, and just having him there and, the, and his heart and his compassion and the ability to speak into the lives of our people because we were beginning to do some things on a scale we've never done before. And so since we were kind of rookies and newbies at doing a lot of this, thank, you know, God brought Jeff in just at the right time. You know, it's always good to have friends visit in the middle of a disaster. And uh, after he left, a Korean guy came to me, spoke no English. He had been in the country for about a week trying to get the government to help some, somehow. Nobody wanted to help him. They thought he was kind of nuts. We had a Korean lady in our church come to me, and she goes, Pastor Paul, will you please talk to this man? His name is Reverend Kim. He's known in Korea for feeding street people, and he's gone to different places around the world helping people, and he wants to help the Philippines. He speaks absolutely no English. It's through an interpreter. He goes, look, I want, I want to help feed people. Will you help me? He goes, the Navy is going to be coming in. I have connections with a, with a Korean Navy. They're coming into the Philippines. 
to, to pay back the nation for how the Philippines helped Korea during the Korean War. They're going to bring bringing in six containers of kitchen equipment. If you help me feed people when this is over, I will give it all to you. So I'm thinking, hmm. And, and the Spirit of God is on the inside. I mean, if he was on the outside, he would be kicking me. You know, I don't know. If you're married, you know you have two Holy Spirits. One on the inside, one on the outside. The one on the inside is easier to ignore. And the one on the inside is much easier on you if you do. If you're married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, and he was just going, yes, yes, tell him yes, tell him yes, tell him you'll do it, you'll do it. And I'm thinking, man, this, I have no idea. I'm thinking, we're going to go down there. He wants me to help feed people, okay? Logistics and costs. I'm getting ready to obligate myself to do something. I'm thinking, oh. and I said, yeah, we'll do it. And I had peace. My head was thinking, oh, my. But my heart had peace. Long story short, because I really want to get to my message. And uh, this is what happens when I don't come in too often. I'm just going to make up for it. No. You don't have any other better place to be tonight than here anyway. And those of you that are home, you're on the couch. You're probably already in your pajamas, you know, whatever you're doing. So you're comfy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And... Uh, so he came in when we, we met the Navy, and, and they unloaded six containers. We brought them to a place. The Korean Navy helped to uh, smooth out a place, and then we designed a, a field kitchen. And in the next 10 months, with all that equipment that they brought in, I mean huge industrial rice ovens, uh, big uh, tilt kettles that you use in industrial kitchens, we had eight of those that he brought in. You know, the kind of stuff where you're stirring with a canoe oar. You know, you don't have a little wooden paddle. You have an oar that you row, row, row your soup, whatever you're doing. And uh, in 10 months, we put out over 1 million hot meals to children that were dealing with malnutrition and starving because their parents, mother, father, and, and the food, the whole system was just destroyed in that area. And he left... After that, Ryan, this all came back because you're talking about Ryan. Ryan went to somebody and said, look, I want to build a kitchen truck, not a food truck that makes burgers or tacos or pizzas or whatever. Uh, I want to build a, a food truck that can pull up into an area and feed people. So we took some of that industrial kitchen stuff, some tilt kettles and rice ovens. And so in 45 minutes, we can cook enough rice for 2,500 people and have enough uh, meat, soup, stew, whatever, in, in about an hour and a half, we can make enough food to feed at least 4,000 plus people. So you give us a couple hours, and that truck can pull up, and we can feed thousands of people anywhere. There is no other truck in the nation. We, we, we bought a truck. Ryan designed it, went to a fabricator, had it done, put all the stuff in there. Since then... Since that storm, we have gone north, south, east, and west. We've gone to other typhoons. We've gone to other mudslides. We've gone to floods. We went up into one place where they had landslides. We went into an area, and we put out 45,000 meals in three days. And because God is, you know, God is looking for a yes here because of all the stuff he wants to do down there. Now, you don't see all that. You just need to make yourself available here. But he's the one who will provide. He's the one that will bring the ability. He's the one that's going to do everything else. He just wants to know, will you make yourself available? Because it's not really up to you. It's just me. Will you trust me in this? Because if you will, he has some unlimited things that he wants to do with you and through you. And life becomes this incredible adventure. Listen, if your Christianity is dull and boring, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, if you're here tonight and you go, you know, I just, I've just lost something, then let me tell you, you need to make some adjustments because you're doing it wrong. And I don't know a better church in the world than this place right here that will help teach you how to do it right to where your life is an adventure. When I met 
this couple in school, they helped take my, my walk and the adventure of serving Jesus and my willingness to step beyond some fears and go beyond some boundaries and, and to face the things that scared me and to do some things I've never done before, I did with this man here. And so it taught me. This is in 78. Man, we're getting older. <laughs> or everybody else is. You know, I, I always have to put the er on there. We're getting older, not old. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but full of wisdom. Now, now I need to get to my message because my, my message deals with wisdom. But, yeah, listen, what can God do with a yes? And so that truck, I need to send you pictures of that truck and, and the kitchen. And, and uh, oh, you, you would love it. You know, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Bill Wilson. Yeah. Bill Wilson is a very, very dear friend of mine. He, he uh, is a heads up Metro World child. It's the largest uh, a sidewalk Sunday school and ministry to uh, kids that are on the streets in the world. Right now, it's about 275,000 kids a week, a week. This is not an exaggeration. Uh, 275,000 kids a week. They minister to, to all over the world. I'm on the board of Metro. Bill's a very dear friend of mine. But years ago, when he first came into the Philippines and we began to talk about what needed to be done, and finally one day he looked at me and goes, look, we're either going to do this or we just need to quit talking about it. In other words, it's just put up or shut up. He said, do we want to do this in the Philippines? And it's like, it's another one of those times God's going, yes, say yes. I'm going, I'm getting ready. See, see that fear of commitment, that fear of What's it going to cost me? And you begin to look at maybe your limitations or your abilities, or, and it's beyond what you can see or understand because you don't see it or you don't understand it or you're not aware of, of how it could possibly come to pass. You have a tendency to stop a yes and hinder something amazing that could happen because of your lack of understanding. But you can't trust God with your head. You have to trust him with your heart. And so this is many, many years ago I told Bill, yeah, let's do it, yeah. Well, for the last, I think we've been overtaken uh, by another country, but until just recently, or we might have, because of all the COVID restrictions and stuff, I think we might be back at number one. But I think we're still one of the number one sites in the world where we minister to at least twenty-five to 30,000 kids on, on the streets every single week. Every single week. Because if you'll just say, yes, what can God do with the yes? Well, look at this church. This is because a couple said yes. Okay, anyway, are you still with me? That was just a very long introduction. I want to share something with you that uh, I have learned when I speak and share and go places to talk to people. My number one goal in life is to help people. And, and what I've seen that works is what helps me will most likely help you. If it's real to me, then I, I believe I can help communicate it and make it real to you. So I'm going to share with you something that has been uh, valuable to Shadi and I, something that has sustained us and kept us, and something that I have gone back to, especially in the last two years. Last two years has been uh, a challenge, obviously, y'all know that, in going through the COVID and the restrictions and and the sickness and the disease and, and, and people that have, people that you know, uh, people, maybe people in this church that have, their families have suffered, people that died, businesses that have been restricted, or church services that have been uh, limited, restricted, and some churches have just shut down. When this thing hit Asia, you know, and we were really close to China, uh, this, it, it was devastating. I, I didn't, I wasn't allowed to leave my house for three and a half months. I was under lockdown in the subdivision in which I live because I'm a senior, you know, they consider me old. And so because we have a gated community, if I would go to drive out because I have lived in this area for so long, they go, Mr. Chase, you know, you're not allowed out of here, sir, you have to go home. I was locked up. Our subdivision didn't even allow people to walk their dogs. We didn't have a dog, so we were lucky. You're not allowed to go for a walk around the neighborhood. Stay inside. 
Don't go anywhere. One person allowed in a car. We had military and police on the streets. You had to have a certificate to go to the bank, the pharmacy, or the grocery store. As Pastor Jeff was saying, we only in the last month or so, five weeks, are able to come together and have services. Listen, those of you at home, do not allow what has happened in the past or the fear or the uncertainty or a casualness to come in and settle in your hearts and to take you away from the value of the community of believers are coming in and getting into the presence of God and enjoying the presence of God because there's something about the intentionality and the giving of your time and your effort and the discipline to go to church, to come back, the continued relationship and the building of relationships and the knitting together of people that's needed in the days in which we live because we will not touch our world just sitting at home through screens. It's people touching people, people loving people, people having relationship with other people, relying upon other people. We cannot allow the situations and the circumstance to disconnect us from who we are in some of the darkest times that are trying to come into our, into our nations. So you have to push through it. The last time we were in the Philippines, we had to sneak into our church and record to an empty church just to preach to people online. We still have a church. We haven't had to lay anybody. It has been absolutely miraculous what God has done. You know why? Because he's faithful. He's faithful. That song that Kingston was singing at the end, uh, I think if Pastor Jeff and I had a theme song of what we've been through, me and Jeff, uh, Shoddy and, 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 and Patsy, could we sing about you are good and your faithfulness? Scars, pains, hurts. Come on, Trey. Hurts, disappointments, bleeding. Oh, you have no idea the blood that we've, the mud and the blood. But in it all, he's good and he's faithful and I trust him. I don't like it. I don't understand what's going on. I don't like what's going on. But I still trust you. I still believe in you. I don't like how I feel in my body. I don't like the emptiness in my wallet. I don't like what's going on with my kids. I don't understand why sheep act like this. Sheep bite. You think a bird pecks? Sheep bite. You're trying to help save somebody's life when they're about ready to take out your jugular. And that's another message. (laughs) Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed because they lack a knowing. Knowledge is not just a a gathering of information, but it's something something and someone that has become real to us. And when that something and that someone, that truth, that value, that principle, that person becomes real to me and I begin to walk in the knowledge of the knowing. See, knowledge isn't just here. It's the knowing of here. Knowledge could be for here, but the knowing has to come from a deeper measure in your heart. The knowing of someone. See, I know this couple. I, we're not around each other a lot. We can go for years and not even see one another. But as soon as we see one another, that connection is there, that love is there, that commitment is there, that that knowing of one another and sharing, it's just there. You don't have to work it. You don't have to try to pump it and prime it and hype it. It's just there. I would trust them with my life because there's there's this knowing. That's what you must have with Jesus. It's not just this, I'm here and he's way out there. You, You have to have this knowing that has to be solid on the inside of you. Because listen, we are in some crazy days. Man, you just watch the news. Man, if we weren't solid, we'd just go back and get high all over again. (laughs) And it's almost legal everywhere now. Man, I mean, we were worried about going to jail years ago, and now everybody's doing it, and it's... 
It won't be long. It'll be legal in Florida. I mean, you go, you go different states everywhere. I mean, I was in one restaurant. I'm going, <laughs> I know that smell. As you know, once it gets registered, it never leaves. Wouldn't it be great if we could just forget all the bad, reject all the negative, and you and I had no fear? No fear. What, what would life be like if we had no fear? What would you be willing to do? What would you be willing to try? Where would you be willing to go? What would you make yourself available to if you had no fear? It's the revelation and impartation and inspiration that comes from the Word of God and the Spirit of God of His presence, His wisdom, His power, and His truth. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Things that exist in your head. Listen, you'll never pull down the stronghold of a city until you pull the one down over your head. I'm pulling down the strongholds of the devil over our city. How about your head? Start there. If you can't pull down the devils messing with your head that have been there for 20 or 30 years, what makes you think you're going to exercise authority over spirits that have been over cities and nations for hundreds or thousands? Let's get real. Free people help set free pe people free. So this verse here isn't talking about just nations and continents. It's talking about you and I personally. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, vain imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You should not have any thought in your head that's above the knowledge of God, of who he is to you and who you are to him. Anything that's above the knowledge of who he is and who you are to him, anything that's above that, you need to bring that down. The knowledge of God's word needs to be the highest thing exalted in your head. Anything above that, you need to get your mind renewed and bring that down. If you don't bring your thoughts into subjection, your thoughts will bring you into bondage. For the days that we live in, you know what the Bible says, if God be for us, well, who can be against us? Well, what's for us? Well, his presence is for us. His wisdom is for us. His power is for us. And his truth is for us. It's not just for us, but it's in us. The Bible says in Isaiah 11 that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and counsel and might. The spirit of the Lord who dwells on the inside of you, who he, he is a spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of knowledge. He is the spirit of understanding. He is the spirit of counsel. I, I, I can either, either pull from above or draw from within when it comes to those things needed in my life. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally. So you can pull or you can draw. Either way, it's available to you. During times of trouble and challenge, personally, emotionally, physically, financially, just in the last two years, I was just sharing with Jeff, of course, usually when a disaster comes, I always call him. We kind of pray each other <laughs> through our own challenges. That's what we've been doing for years. Yeah. The Bible says that a brother's born for adversity. And listen, I'm not going to fight alone. I'm no fool. I don't think that I have to. I, you know, if, if one can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. You know, one good thing about people and relationships that you trust and you are safe with, you have friends that can watch your back so you can progress and focus on moving forward. You need that. You need those kind of relationships. So when I am in challenges or I'm going through things, yeah, I'll share it with Jeff. Year, uh, over a year ago, I was dealing with prostate cancer, and it got really, really bad. I probably should have dealt with it earlier, and I didn't. My bad. And then it started to leak. The doctor said, if you don't get this out of you, it could go into your bladder, your kidneys, your liver, or bone cancer. And uh, it's not that prostate cancer is 
all that bad. Eventually, it can kill you, but the thing is, if you don't deal with it, it'll go into other areas, and those things are very, very serious. And then it began to leak. It began to bleed out. So I had to immediately go in and get it taken care of while we were in COVID, and I couldn't get out of the country, and my mom was very sick. I had to talk to my mom on the phone and release her so she could go on and be with the Lord. I wasn't able to get out of the country. So two days later, she passed. I wanted to get out. I, there were no flights. I couldn't leave the country. I couldn't get out of the country. And also my condition, it wasn't good for me to fly. So, yeah, I, we, you know, we have some, some challenges that have come up. Church is shut down. Uh, and so church challenges, physical challenges, and all these other things. But the Bible says the people who know their God will be strong. The people who know, the people who know their God, not know about him, heard wonderful stories about him that we can recite, and those are good stories, but the people who know him, of his goodness, of his faithfulness. The people who know their God, not know about their God, but know their God. It's one thing if, if you've heard me or if I be, I've been here and maybe you've, you've, you've heard me once or twice. You know about me, but you don't know me. There's a difference between knowing about somebody and knowing them. Because when you really, really know that, well, some people you know, you know you can't trust. But, but there, yeah, there's that side. But, but that trust comes with that knowing, that full confidence and relying upon and having faith in comes with the knowing and the knowledge of the character of that person. And when we're talking about God, there is no uh, lack, there is no lie, there is no deception, and he will never go back on his word. If he's said it, he'll certainly bring it to pass. You know, when Paul was in a storm for two weeks, they hadn't eaten. And finally, the angel of the Lord came and he spoke to him and he stood up and he said, listen, uh, and he quoted just, uh, first he told everybody they should listen to him. He said, but there stood by me an angel of the Lord to whom I belong and to whom I serve. He goes, and I believe that it will be as it was told me. What did he say? He goes, I belong to God. I serve God. And it's going to be as it was told me. Who do you belong to? Do you really know that you have a sense of belonging? I belong to God. I serve God. And I believe God. Because I know. I know of his goodness. I know of his faithfulness. And, and, and I know that he'll never leave me. I, I know that he will never disappoint me. I know that if there's anything that we learned when we went to school, is the integrity of God's word. That God is good. That he's not bad. That he's for you. He's not against you. That if he has said it, he'll certainly bring it to pass. That has kept us alive and going for 40 some years. That foundation got built into our lives. And when we couldn't explain anything else, we could trust him and what he said and his word. So now I want to get to my message. You're thinking, dear God, get there, man, quick. <laughs> Bigger than man, beyond circumstance or situations. The building of a faith and a confidence and a trust and a peace. And this is something that I've had to go back to and pull on and rely on time and time. Let me stop this thing. You know, I love legal pads because they don't jump around and move on you. And batteries don't die. A revelation in four areas that has been a stability in my life. And not just in the past, but presently and moving forward. Number one, that God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. Do you believe that? It's kind of weak. Do you believe that? Yes. Do you believe he is all-knowing? Yes. He's omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful. Yes. Number three, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Yes. And his immutability, which is a fancy word that just means he cannot lie. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. And his presence is everywhere and he cannot lie. He is eternal. Nothing can defeat him. No one, nothing is smarter than him. And it's my prayer that when you walk out of here today or you go offline that you feel empowered 
in the things that you are going through. Because listen, we live in uncertain times. Things continue to change. This war that's going on in Ukraine, it's affecting people's lives. There are things that are going to happen, they say, in the coming months or towards the end of the year. Everybody's talking about food shortages and transportation shortages. I mean, we live in Florida just above us in Georgia. The governor of the state declared the state under a state of emergency because they can't get enough trucks to deliver food into the, into the, na- into the state. The, the stores are, are running out of things, and they said things aren't even bad yet. I'm thinking, wait a minute. This is the kind of stuff that I've experienced in other countries of the world. And, and let's, let's not deceive ourselves where, we, where we, we trust because we're in America, and this is America. And it can happen, bad can happen all over the world, but not here. My faith is not in a nation or a constitution. My faith is in Jesus and his word and who he is. America is, I, I thank God for America. I love, I love this nation. I, I'm very patriotic. But we don't have a great nation because of a constitution. Our nation is great because of another piece of paper or another document that says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The the greatness of our nation is because of the principles of God's word. That's what makes this nation great. And one of the things that we have to understand, and this is the value of the church today. And I say this as someone that has lived outside of America for 42 years. Missionaries, we go to nations and we go with an attitude of we're there to change a nation. We're there to influence a country. We have a saying in our church, we have a city to touch, a nation to reach, and a world to change. All of us together, we make a difference. I, we, have a, we actually have a coffee mug and they printed it. I mean, they take words that you speak and they make mugs out of it. I don't know, I guess that makes you eternal or something. <laughs> and, but years ago I said, you know, I want to help write the, the, the part of the history of this nation when it comes to Christianity. I want to influence the nation of the Philippines. I want to influence the nations that I go into in Vietnam or Nepal or Cambodia or Myanmar or, or Nagaland or India or, or Japan or, or wherever we're going in Malaysia. I, I want to help influence. I want to bring change to a nation. You see, in America, many people just want to build a good church, but nobody ever thinks, I am here to influence my city. I am here to be an influence in my state. I am here to make sure that my, my nation has an awareness of the goodness of God. We don't really think that. We want good churches, but we don't think my nation needs me. But missionaries that go to other nations realize we are there to affect the nation. We're there to change the nation. America is what it is because of the church. And we cannot draw back from that. We cannot get complacent. We cannot get carnal. We cannot get casual. There has to be an intensity. There has to be this this passion that cannot wane because of challenges, situations, viruses. We have to push through it. We have to stand because we have a purpose that's greater than just a successful church. St. Louis needs you. Missouri needs you. America needs you. And and, and that's not just something for the mission field. The earth is a mission field. And we need to understand that this power, this wisdom, and this presence. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust, 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 trust. Do you trust him? Thank you, Patsy, for that. Amen. (laughs) Do you trust him? Do you trust him when you don't understand what's going on? Do you trust him when you, you can't see beyond the next three steps? Do you trust him to take one step? Do you trust him in a willingness and obedience and an availability? Do you trust him to do what the word says? Do you trust him when you're in pain? Do you trust him when there's, when there's some confusion? Do you trust him in uncertainty? Do you trust him in a, and because it's not the situation on the outside It's what's happening on the inside, this knowing of who he is. That he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, he's ever-present, he cannot lie, and I trust him. Psalms 37, verse 5, trust in the Lord. Trust, trust, trust. So many times we don't. 
Trust in the Lord, do good. Dwell in the land. Feed on his faithfulness. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he will bring it to pass. Three prayers. I, I, and, and I want to, I pray that you, you take this and do something with it. Don't be like people that go to a grocery store, walk up and down the aisles for about an hour and go home. You need to take a cart. I mean, have you ever gone to a grocery store with a cart, push it up and down the aisle for 45 minutes and walked out and bought nothing? Isn't that a waste of time? I mean, who wants to go? I, I don't know what kind of stores you have here. We have Publix and Winn-Dixie and things like that in Florida. I mean, I don't want to get a grocery cart, walk up and down the aisles and be impressed with everything that I see in the aisles and then go home. That's a ridiculous waste of time. I go, man, did you see the steak that was in that container? <laughs> man, look at those ribs. Look at this steak. Look at all that stuff here. And you, and you look at all the stuff and you're going, wow. And you walk out with nothing. You take nothing home. And you have a memory that fades. Now, sometimes women can do that when they go shopping. I don't get that. If I'm going to go somewhere, I want to buy something. I'm not real impressed with just looking. It frustrates me. <laughs> I don't want to go look at stuff I can't buy. Oh, I'm so, so happy looking at all the things I can't get right now. Why take myself into depression? <laughs> go get it, be happy, go home, but just go look at all the stuff. Oh, I wish I could get No, no, I'm not going there. If that's you, bless you. But I want you to take something home tonight, and if there's anything that I pray you take home amidst all of this somewhat rambling here, is the prayers of Paul. Get back to it. Get back to those. Why does Paul have these three prayers? When we talk about this all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present God who cannot lie, and this, this knowledge and this wisdom and this power and this presence that's all wrapped up in who he is is meaningless in all of who he is doesn't get translated into who he is in us and with us and through us and how it affects me in my daily life. And this is what Paul is praying. It's like the leper who comes to Jesus and goes, uh, if you're willing, I know you can make me whole. He's, he basically, he's acknowledging I know you got the goods, I know what you can do, but I have no idea if what you have is, is available to me. Jesus answered that. You need to get some answers of all that he is. Oh, please get this tonight. Of all that he is, of this all-knowing God, of this all-powerful God, of this ever-present God, and all that's wrapped up in all of the facets of who he is and this Jesus and this, this Holy Spirit who comes to make Jesus real to you. The purpose of all of this is to make it real and cause it to come alive inside of you in this life, in this time, in this generation. So the knowledge and the presence and the power can be expressed in your life, with your life, and through your life. It is just not having the knowledge of God's got that, but what God has, he wants to deposit and make real and demonstrate it through my life so the world can see it. Yeah. Ephesians 1. Now I'm going to be reading between Amplified and Amplified Classic. I just, I like how it says it. Starting with verse 17. For I always pray, and as I read this, I'm really not just reading this to you. I'm speaking these words over your life, into your life. I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he would grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation into the insight of mysteries and secrets. In other words, that there are no mysteries and secrets that stay mysteries and secrets. Because God's not hiding things 
from you. He's wanting to reveal it to you. And Paul is saying that things don't stay a secret. A mystery is something not yet revealed. Paul's saying that whatever's not been revealed, I'm praying it gets revealed to you. There's no secrets. There's no hidden. There's no unknown. You become aware. That he would grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. What's revelation? A seeing and knowing. It's like, oh. Revelation is not just how you see him, but how you see that he sees you. You're the Christ, you're the son of the living God. Oh, blessed are you, Simon bar My Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. But I say unto you also that you are. See, see, Peter got a revelation of who he was, but then Jesus said, there's another side to that. Let me give a revelation of how I see you. You need a revelation of how he sees you. Because when you get a revelation of how he sees you, let me tell you, some things will begin to change. Those strongholds will come down. That insecurity, that fear, that worry, that panic will begin to come down because you really know, hey, he's got my back. He's on my side. I don't have to live under guilt, shame, and condemnation and regret from the past. I see how he sees me. That's where freedom comes. When you begin to see how he sees you. Into mysteries and secrets and the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so you can know and understand. What happens when, you're, when the, the eyes of your heart are flooded with light? There's nothing hidden, there's nothing in darkness. There's clarity. You see. No more shadows. That you would. You can know and understand, know and understand, to comprehend, to hope to which he's called you, and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones, and so that you can know and understand. Again, know and understand. He wants you to know some things. He wants you to understand some things. That's what Paul is praying. That's what he's speaking to the Ephesians. Why is this book in the New Testament? Because the Spirit of God wants you to know and understand. So you can know and understand what? What is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us? What things are you worried about, concerned about, but you forgot because you do not know nor remember or have a knowing and a knowledge and understanding of the immeasurable? Say this, immeasurable. immeasurable. What does that mean? It's beyond measuring. It's immeasurable. It's unlimited. What does that mean? It never runs out. It's unlimited. And the surpassing greatness of his power. When's the last time that you reminded yourself in the pit, the problem, or the pain that there is an immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for me who believe? Because the devil wants to make sure, and he's trying to convince you that your present pain, your present circumstance is going to be more real than what you presently believe. And you're going to have to go back to what Paul prayed. He goes, listen, this is what I'm praying for you. I want you to know some things. I want you to understand some things. I want you to know of the wisdom and the knowledge and the intimacies of who he is. I want you to become aware of this immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing great power in and for you. Those who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. He's talking about resurrection power. Come on, we just came past Easter. The power of, of the resurrection isn't something we should celebrate and focus on once a year. It's something we need to be aware of every single day as we walk through the uncertainties and the challenges and the viruses and the economic challenges and, and everything else that's coming across and the wars and the rumors of wars and, and what is China going to do with Taiwan and what is going to happen here and, and what's going to happen in there and who's going to bomb who and what's going to be lacking here. In the middle of all of that, you're going to have to keep your eyes on Jesus and realize that this all-knowing, this all-powerful, this ever-present God who cannot lie is in me, he's with me, and he's for me. 
and all is going to be well in my life because I trust him. Ephesians 1, he's put all things under his feet and appointed him to be the universal supreme head of the church, a headship exercise throughout the church, which is his body. Say, that's us. Thank you, Patsy. That's us. Come on, say, that's us. The fullness of him who feels all in all, for in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete, and who feels everything everywhere with himself. The presence of God. Never minimize. Be here early. Come in ready to worship. Corporate worship is so powerful. I I, I, I miss it. I'm here on the verge of tears. I'm sitting here, and, and, and especially when Kingston went into that last, last song, and of course I was just blessed just watching Kingston and watching him. I mean, I watched that, that little, little dude, he's now a man, watch him grow up, and he's going to be a dad. How cool is that? Grandkids are great. And but I'm sitting there, and I'm, and I'm sitting there almost in tears, and I'm, I'm thinking, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. You'll never let me down. You'll never let me down. Man, I've been through some wars, but he's never let me down. I've been broke, but he's never let me down. I've been sick, but he's never let me down. I've been betrayed, slandered, and, and lied about, but he's never let me down. And he's always been there, and he's always seen me through. And there's been times when my head has been screaming in agony, but my heart said, hold steady, hold steady, because this all-knowing, this all-power, this ever-present God who cannot lie, go back to what his word says. And who is he to you? Who is he to you? And you focus on that, and you wrap your arms around that, and you hold on to that, and it'll see you through any challenge, any pain pain, and you'll persevere and you'll go through it. What do we see? We see the wisdom of God. We see the power of God. One of the things that we see in these prayers, this all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present God, we see in Paul's prayers, he talks about the knowledge of God, the knowing of God, the understanding that comes of who he is, the wisdom of God, the presence of God, and the power of God. That's why you go back to these prayers. Don't let a message impress you and go, oh, that's really good. The impression of an hour will not impact your life if you don't do something with it. I'm not here to impress you. Pastor Jeff doesn't stand up here to impress you. There's a difference between impression and impartation. Impression fades. Impartation does not. Impression is a memory that fades in time. Impartation is a planting of a seed that will grow into a tree. You must grow things in your heart that comes from impartation by the receiving of the word. Ephesians 3, 16. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power. See, here we go. Back to the power. This all-powerful God. He said, listen, I want you. I'm the source of it all, but from me, you have this unlimited, immeasurable, surpassing, great power. What what do you need? Because whatever you need, I got it. There's no lack. the, The supply is unlimited. What do you need tonight? What do you where where do you draw from tonight? Don't go off. Entertainment is a temporary resting place that will never meet a need. Don't go to escape the pressures. Go to something that's going to strengthen you to walk through the pressure. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personality. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and length and depth and height of his love, fully experiencing this amazing love. Then verse 19, that you may really come to know practically 
to experience for yourselves. Now listen, I love chocolate chip cookies with either semi-sweet or dark chocolate and walnuts. And if it's a little crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside, it's like, it just about makes you want to speak in tongues. <laughs> like, come on, Jesus. And I love when I stay at the hotel and I check in, I get my cookie. And I was so blessed today because they already had the keys for me. It didn't matter. I was already pre-checked in, but I still went up to the front desk. I'm here for my cookie. <laughs> and Ethan, God bless him, when I got up to my room, there were already two other cookies waiting for me. <laughs> now you can show me a picture of a cookie. You can talk to me about a cookie. You can show me a video of a cookie. You can explain the cookie. You're wasting your time. Just give me a cookie and let me taste it. Yeah. Once I taste it, you don't need to talk. <laughs> we have to stop being impressed with just hearing about what somebody else said and begin to have an experience for ourselves that you may really come to know practically through eating the cookie, through experience for yourself, the love of Christ, which far surpasses just mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God and have the richest measure of a divine presence and become a body individually and collectively and corporately filled and flooded with God himself. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than we dare ask, think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams according to his power. His power. We're talking about the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, the presence of God, and the power of God. Paul deals with this all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present God, and he, co and, he, and he covers that in every one of his prayers. In Ephesians 5, 17, look carefully then how you walk. Live purposely, worthily, and accurately, not as the unwise and the witless, but as wise, sensible, and intelligent people making the most of the time buying up each opportunity because the days are evil therefore do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish but understanding and firmly grasping what is the will of the Lord see it comes back to the, the knowing this knowledge this wisdom this understanding this presence and this power and I'll close with this as they play all pastors know what that means you're done. Colossians 1 9. Again, Paul's prayer. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 3. Colossians 1. Open your Bibles. Get off Facebook. Get your face in the book. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard of it, we do not cease to pray and make special requests for you. This is my prayer for you tonight. As another Paul speaking to you asking that you be filled you here tonight you watching online that you would be filled with the full deep and clear and knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom this all-knowing God in comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things that you may live, that you may walk, live and conduct, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, desiring to please Him in all things, and that you, every one of you, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily, everybody say steadily. Oh, come on, say it like you may say, steadily. Steadily growing and increasing by the knowledge of God, this knowing of God with fuller, deeper, clearer insight, acquaintance, and recognition. This all-knowing God. And then it says, and we pray that you be invigorated and strengthened with all power 
according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance patience perseverance and forbearance with joy no virus no economic challenge no sickness no disease is going to steal my joy I will persevere I will endure and I will keep my joy as I go forward because this all-knowing all-powerful ever-present God is making himself known to me and he's filling me and he's empowering me giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Aren't you glad he qualified us? And made us, to, made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in the light. The Bible talks about Jesus, that Jesus Christ is both the wisdom of God and the power of God. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 3. Colossians 1. Take it. Read it. It was part of our life when we came out of Rhema. Man, I prayed Ephesians 1 and I put my name in there. My name was written on the pages of the Bible that I had at that time. On a daily basis, Father, I thank you that you're filling me. You're filling me. You're filling me with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I thank you that I have a walk that is worthy of you that not just worthy of you but the worth of who I am in this walk is demonstrated out worthy of you bearing fruit in every good work and constantly steadily increasing 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 not in knowledge here but knowing here so I can trust you that this all powerful ever present all knowing God who cannot lie is with me every single day and every step that I take and he has a plan for my life and it's good it's good it's good it's good father I thank you for an imparting and a settling of these words of all the things said tonight take specific points as needed and necessary in individual lives and hearts and homes and families those here and those watching we take it to heart and we meditate on it because the freedom and the strength and the wisdom and the joy that we need the source of it is found in the seeds that are being planted in hearts and minds tonight and strongholds are coming down where they will not torment people they will not limit people they will not keep people bound and fearful and limited and worried and panicking those days are over the knowledge of the truth is exalted above every lie Lies bring bondage. Truth brings freedom. So I speak freedom and peace and joy and strength and wisdom and knowledge and understanding and might into the heart of your people in every home and every family. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Man, the difference between impression and impartation. Impression will dissipate, impartation will incorporate and build in our lives. We just had an amazing download tonight. Thank you, Paul. Wow, I'm excited about what God's doing. That's a beautiful message. You glad you came tonight? You know, I'm glad this is on YouTube because I intend to watch this and, uh, and meditate on that. It went right along the lines of some things the Lord's been speaking to my wife about knowledge, about knowing Him. So it's a very pertinent, timely word. How powerful is a timely word? Listen, before we dismiss, I want to give you an opportunity to give and sow. We love blessing our guest speakers. Uh, they come good news from a distant land and uh, so if you would like to sow uh, and express your appreciation uh, by all means do it and uh, it's a it's a wonderful opportunity to bless people like Paul and uh, 
wonderful things God's called them to. I have, uh, you know, visions of a food truck dancing in my head. And uh, I'm excited that they've already got a prototype that uh, will help us to, to make it really, you know, really efficient. And the idea of being able to feed 4,000 people in just a few hours is uh, actually something the Lord is saying. So we've got to get ready for that. And uh, a gentleman from Florida actually sowed heavily, and uh, that's what I want to get with what he gave. Uh, but you can also give the we'll, we're going to just have to build and retrofit some things, and I, I want to get uh, get that underway as soon as possible. Um, so let's get ready to give. Can we sing that song, King? Um, the staff will bring the buckets out, and uh, God bless you guys for coming tonight. This is so wonderful. The meeting isn't over. You can hang out in fellowship. and uh, But also, Paul is our speaker at 8, 9.30, and 11.15 on Sunday. So it's going to be good. And uh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad you, 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 you know Paul Chase? And that he, is, uh, he stayed faithful to the course all these decades. Because Paul, the best is yet to come for us you best is yet to come for you and shoddy and your kids let's all stand up once the buckets pass kingston lead us